I now want to take this matrix that's in reduced row echelon form and use it to describe the solution set to the system of equations. Uh, so the first thing might be to note that each column on this augmented matrix, or each column to the left of that vertical bar, uh, corresponds to a variable. So the variables in this system were x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. So the first thing uh, might be just to take each row and write the corresponding equation. So the equation corresponding to that first row would be 1x1 uh, plus 1x3 plus 1x5 is equal to 3. The equation corresponding to the second row would be x2 plus x3 equals 2. And the equation corresponding to the um, third row would be x4 plus x5 equals 2. Now, um, the basic variables of first system are the variables that correspond to the pivot columns. So x1 is a basic variable because there's a pivot here. The next pivot is right here at x in the x2 column, so x2 is a basic variable. And the next pivot is here in the x4 column. Uh, so the basic variables are uh, x1, x2, and x4. And the other variables we call free variables. It turns out in our solution set, um, the values of these variables, so in this case x3 and x5, can take on any real value. Um, these two variables can take on any value and then uh, the corresponding values for these basic variables will depend on um, actually these equations that comes from these equations. So the next thing you should do in a system like this, a dependent system, is to take those three equations and solve them for the basic variables. So that first equation you can solve for x1 just by moving the other two variables over. So that'll be x1 equals 3 minus x3 minus x5. Take that second equation and solve for the next basic variable, x2. So x2 is equal to 2 minus x3. And take that third equation and solve for the next basic variable, which is x4, be 2 minus x5. Now you let these free variables, x3 and x5, they're going to um, take on all real values. So we set up parameters. This is how you write the um, parametric solution or the parametric form of the solution set is we say, okay, well, so let x3 be represented by this parameter s. We like to use s and t as parameters. Uh, and let x5 be represented by this parameter t. Well, then the solution set is going to look like this. x1 is equal to 3 minus uh, x3, which is s, minus x5, which is t now. x2 is equal to 2 minus x3, which is now represented by the parameter s. x3 is just represented by the parameter s. x4 is equal to 2 minus x5, which is now represented by the parameter t. And x5 is just represented by t. And so this is the solution set. And that's where s and t can have any real value. So the way we write that is um, we could write where s and t are an element of, we write kind of that curly e means element of, and this r with the two vertical bars means the set of all real numbers. So this is where s and t belong to the set of all real numbers. So that's just another way of writing um, s and t are any real number. Uh, if we substituted, we could, if we wanted to go a little further, and I, I'm going to keep this short so I won't work through this too much, but if we wanted to say uh, let s equal 1 and um, let t equal 2, then that would generate a solution. You can plug in specific values for s and t and generate solutions to the three equations. So that would give us, let's see, 3 minus 1 minus 2, that'll give us 0 in the first entry. Uh, 2 minus s, so that'd be 2 minus 1. Uh, 
x3 is just s, so that'll be 1. s4 is equal to 2 minus t, so that would be 0. And x5 is just equal to t, which is 2. So that's one solution. And you could sit in and, and plug those values in for x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 in all three equations, and you would get three true statements if you worked that through. And so that's just an example of how this um, solution set is, is used. But when you're asked for the parametric form um, for the solution set of a dependent system, this right here is what you're being asked to find.